Hey gang, Jeff here with www.missionmusician.com and today I want to talk about gain staging. <clears throat> now, I don't want to get into all the nerdy stuff because honestly, I'm not really into that, uh, but I do want to kind of stress the importance of gain staging and how you do, or at least how I do it. Now, this is something that's debatable and a lot of different mixers use different ways of gain staging for instance i had a way that i was using for a long time uh and then i saw um a quote from kenny Gioa, who is a producer and mixer that i admire and uh he mixes his tracks at negative 3 dB. So he has negative 3 dB of head, headroom. And that is very hot. Um, he, he said that he likes to mix that way because he likes the way it affects the plugins that way. Um, so I have recently been trying that out. And I just, I don't like it. Um, I don't like getting to the end of the mix and having no headroom at all but that's just a personal uh, opinion like i said there's different ways to go about it now plug-in manufacturers um, set up their plugins uh, like analog gear so in other words zero vu uh, on analog gear is uh, equal to uh, 20 db of headroom um, or negative 20 db uh, so plug in plug-in manufacturers at least probably 80 to 90 percent of them set up their plugins for the sweet spot at around negative 18 uh, db uh, dbfs actually uh, db full scale um, so uh, when you're using plugins you kind of want to hit the sweet spot or at least be around it now you don't have to be all the way down at negative 18 or negative 20 or um you know because you're gonna have you know you don't have your audio that hits exactly one uh, take a snare drum for instance it could hit at negative 20 and then it could hit at negative 10 i mean it it's kind of a dynamic instrument same with bass so it's impossible to keep it like right at negative 18. Um, but if you're in the general ballpark of negative 25, say, to negative 10 in that area, and I realize it's kind of a big swing, but if you're in that ballpark, you're you're going to be in the sweet zone of the plug-in. Okay, and so how do we get our audio that way? Um, a lot of, when we're, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that, when we're referring to recording, uh, back in the old days, you wanted to uh, record a hot signal uh, because of uh, noise, the noise floor and because of tape hiss and all that kind of stuff. But nowadays, we don't need to do that. We do not need to record a hot signal. Um, if you record a signal at around negative 15, negative 20, that's plenty hot enough. Uh, now, it may not look big on the waveform or whatever, but that's okay. Um, and again, what I'm teaching here is just my way of doing it. And it is not the only way to do it. All right. So I'm just giving you uh, a glance into what I do. And so when you record, you don't need to record a hot signal. However, as a mixer, uh, I get uh, musics I get stems sent to me all the time <laughs> that are just way too hot I mean way too hot so how do we combat that well in Pro Tools I can use clip gain to combat that um, but not everyone has Pro Tools but most DAWs have a trim plug-in or some kind of uh, volume that will take down the uh, audio before it gets to the fader okay so um, and I just want to be clear here I have trim plugins set up uh, 
after these plugins up here, which are bypassed. That should never be the case. Uh, I'm just shooting this for tutorial purposes. The trim plugin, your gain uh, plugin, should always be before any plugin. Um, it should be the very first insert. Okay, so these sh all should be in the number one sp spot. Okay, I just have a drum mix going on here, and um, so I was. Uh, that I shot for the ultimate uh, drum mixing course and I'm just using this session as an example uh, so I've got all these bypassed in my trim plugins all down here okay so normally what I would do is uh, I would take the uh, clip gain right here and I could lower it down to wherever I needed it to be okay so uh, What's going on here? Sorry. Oh, that's a high track. I didn't really care about that. Um, so what I've done here is I've started at the very start of my session with the kick drum. And I put the meter up at zero. And then I opened up a trim plug in. And I brought it down to where it was hitting, you know, somewhere between 20 and 15, somewhere in there. And then I just walked all the way down my mix, inserting a trim plug in on every single uh, uh, track and brought the volume down to wherever it was hitting around, you know negative 20 negative 15 so let's listen really quick and I'll I'll walk through this really quick okay so the kick right there it hit it at about 17 um, it was hitting up at around 12 that's totally fine that's completely acceptable um, and let's just scroll down the tracks and you can see kind of where they're all hitting let's, for example well that's not a good one to open let's open the base i had to take it down negative five almost negative six so the bass is kind of all over the place um, and it'll level out once I put compression on a little bit. Uh, so, but the end result of all of this is if I go down to my master uh, fader, uh, why is this pushed up? I don't know why that was pushed up, but uh, I should be anywhere from negative 12 to negative 6. I like to have a maximum of 6 dB of headroom, so let's see where we're at. All right, so on the loudest hit, it was hitting negative eight, which is good. Um, I could actually bring everything up just a little bit. Uh, and in Pro Tools, how I would do that is I would select um, all of the channels here. And then if I clicked on one of these faders, I could bring them all up just a little bit. Well, here, let's just do that. Let me grab this and I'm just gonna move it up a DB well let's go up maybe 2 DB alright and then I would turn all off and I would walk through all of my buses and just drop them all back down to zero whoops except where they weren't at zero let's see Uh -huh. That didn't work out too well, did it? <laughs> uh, I should have been paying attention. 
Uh, let's bring this down about 2 dB and bring this down about 2 dB. And I want to play that part again. I think it peaked right around 6. Um, it might have peaked a little more, so I just want to watch that really quick. So it's right at six. So this is a good level. Um, so, and if I wanted the master output even louder, I could drive all these up louder. Um, the important thing to remember is that the signal coming into the channel, okay, is tr is trimmed. We're trimming it down to around negative uh, twenty, negative fifteen, somewhere in that area. And then we're adding plugins after that. So it's hitting the plugins at the sweet spot. So if we turn these up a little bit more, it's not going to have a, an effect on um, the incoming signal driving uh, the plugins. Now, if you're top down mixing, obviously it will have some kind of effect if you push these up because all these are running here. And if you put plugins on here, they're going to be a little bit louder. But that's okay. Um, again, these numbers aren't like you don't have to be like dead on. Just if you're in the ballpark, you're in a good position. And I I like mixing to where <coughs> excuse me. Um, I'm I'm living right around negative six on my master. And so then also I want to talk about gain staging in another way. Um, so if you were adding plugins on, um, let's see, let's just, uh, let's just choose this. And you also have to gain stage your plugins, meaning that when you bypass them, they shouldn't lose volume or shouldn't gain volume. It should be the same volume. So if I was, let's say, EQing this guitar, and let me just boost some stuff in here. It may sound bad, but I just want to use this as an example. Right, so I added gain to that um, by boosting. So I want to correct that. Uh, let's do that really quick. Right, so I want to gain stage my plugins as well. So if I add gain, or if I subtract gain with EQ, um, another good example would be. Uh, let me just put a stock EQ on here. So if I come in here and. I'm just trying to get these meters to read different. So on a stock EQ, uh, if I, I now I wouldn't normally do these kind of crazy cuts usually, but I want to gain stage this so the input is the same as the output. So in this case, I would turn the output up. All right, so that's gain staging plugins. Um, and the reason why you want to do that, one, is if you don't gain stage, you're going to end up in add gain. And that's not necessarily a horrible thing if you have plenty of headroom down at the end. The, re the, the reason why it's not a good idea is because um, 
it messes with your judgment. So if you're EQing and you're adding gain and you're adding EQ, uh, you're boosting the EQ, and then you go to bypass it and it's softer, well, you're naturally going to think that with the EQ in, it sounds better. But you're thinking that because it's louder, not necessarily because of the EQ boost that you did. So when we gain stage our plugins, we can bypass them and hear a one-to-one -one comparison as far as volume. And that tells us if the moves that we're making are good moves. Okay, so that is how I gain stage. Again, it's subjective. A lot of people do it different ways. This is how I do it, um, and it works well for me. I've tried it other ways, and I don't know. It's just, I, I guess I'm just set in my ways on some things, and this is the way that I was taught a long, long, long time ago. And so and this is how I do it now. And like I said, I've experimented, but uh, I don't know. It's it just used to doing it this way. So that's it for this video on gain staging. Uh, if you like my videos, just subscribe to my channel. Also, visit my blog over at um, www.missionmusician.com. Um, there's plenty of blog posts and articles and free course over there. And then also, if you do me a favor, if you like these videos, share them on your YouTube channel. Um, I want to get as many people interested in this stuff. Uh, I want to reach out to them and help them as much as possible. So if you know someone who uh, loves to work in audio but doesn't know how to do certain things, just send them my way. Send them my YouTube channel. I'd appreciate it. Thanks. And I will see you in another video. Bye-bye.